All right, so I'm going to be doing a brief overview and general knowledge of the Photoshop layout and common things that you might use just to kind of review your Photoshop basics assignment up here at the very top where it says file, edit, image, etc. That would be your menu bar. Down here you have your options bar and this will change depending on the tool you have selected. Over here on the left hand side you have all of your tools. And over here to the right, you have all your different panels. So to start with the tools, um, you'll notice that there's a little arrow in the bottom right corner of some of these tools. That means they have hidden tools. So I can either right click to see the other tool options, or I can just click and hold, and that will also pop up as well. If you hover over the tools, it'll tell you what the tool is. And then in parentheses, for example, this one says L, that would be the shortcut. So if I hit L on my keyboard, it automatically jumps to the lasso tool. And again, you can see the options bar changed because I've changed tools. I'm not going to go through all the tools right now, um, but I do want to touch on the, the uh, swatches or your foreground and background color. What these are, are your colors that you have that you're using at the particular moment. So your foreground color is going to be the color that is used if you have a paintbrush or if you're typing a font or whatever it may be. The foreground color will be the color that you're using. Now you can use these little double arrows to switch the foreground and background color. Or you can also select this little tiny two boxes which will set you to your default colors, which happens to be black and white. But if I come over here to my swatches and I click on the blue, changes my foreground color to blue, I go ahead and switch them and let's pick pink. And now on top I have pink and I can switch those back and forth. And then I can also click the little double box here, which makes them back to my default colors. When it comes to your panels, this is where you can kind of customize it a little bit. Honestly, I would say the ones you're going to use the most will be your swatches, your adjustments, and your layers. So those should always be present. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little double arrow here that will close them or open them. Same thing with over here. This is set up a little differently though. Let's see. I can also click on one particular one, I don't have to open up the whole menu. I can just click on one and see that this is my character menu, paragraph, different options like you would have in Word. I can also remove them as well. So um, let's say I don't use this properties one very often and it just bugs me. I can click and drag it off the bar and then you see there's a little X here and you can click it away. Now, if you accidentally close one that you want to open up again, you can come up here to the window menu, and you can now select a menu to open. So I just closed my property, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on that one. It opens it back up for me, and now I can click and drag it back over here to the bar, and I can select where I want it to be, or maybe I want it to be its own menu. So it's a way to kind of customize your items. So you see now they're a little bit shorter. You can see here, there's like this little bar and I get a little double arrow. So I can click and make it bigger if I want to. There we go. So this is a way you can kind of customize your uh, Photoshop. Over here where it says essentials, you always want to see essentials up here. Um, you can create your own workspace. So you'll see it says new workspace. So if I wanted to customize my workspace and make a new one, I could click here to make a new one, name it myself, and go ahead and have different panels open or whatever you want, and then you can save them, and then you can open that back up. To make a new document in Photoshop, 
you're just going to go to file new it's going to ask you the specifications for it so um I'm gonna go ahead and just choose US paper, which is your normal uh, piece of paper, eight and a half by 11. 300 pixels is always the resolution you wanna have, especially for printing. RGB is more used for web, so I'm going to change this to my CMYK, and that will change it to our printing mode of color which is CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Key is another word for black. So right here we have our custom settings. I can put a title in here now if I want to, but you don't have to. So you can just now click OK. And now you can see you have your new untitled document. You have rulers that are up here if you'd like to use them. And now you have your 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. If you don't like your rulers, you can simply do Control R on your keyboard and that removes them. Or if you don't like the shortcut, you can go to View and come down here to Rulers. It also does show you any shortcuts over here to the right as well. So if there's something you use a lot that you want to know the shortcut for, it's always going to be right here. Um, another Thing to just kind of briefly show you and I'm just going to select a random color here so you'll notice right here up here in my bar I have it untitled but if I go ahead and select my paintbrush make it nice and big for you to see no it's not as big as I thought so I'll go a little bit bigger all right so if I go ahead and now use my paintbrush to write something, you'll notice that this little star pops up. So when that star is there, that means your work is not saved. So you can simply do Control S to save your work. Now because I haven't saved this before, it's going to ask me to name it. So I'm just going to name it Test. You always want to make sure you save your first file as a PSD, which is a Photoshop document. That way you can go back and edit it later. For me, I'm just going to do it on my desktop, and the format is a Photoshop file, so that is correct. So now I'm just going to go ahead and hit Save. And now you'll notice that you can now see it says Test PSD, and that little asterisk has gone away, that little star. So let's say I go ahead and change my document again. I'm going to use my brackets to change the size of my eraser. And I'm just going to get rid of this exclamation point. Maybe I didn't like it. So now you can see that that little star came back. So again, I'm going to do Control S on my keyboard. And now my document is saved and that little star is gone. It's always important, especially working on large projects, to always save your work, I would say every 5-10 minutes or whenever you think about doing it. You never know what might happen. We see land school take over computers. Photoshop might shut down on you. Your computer might do an update for no reason. So it's always important to save your work periodically. That way if something does happen, hopefully you only have to do a small amount of work instead of redo your entire day's worth of work. One other thing I want to kind of talk about before um, we end this little session, just adding those back over there. Okay, so you have a history panel. It looks like three little blocks on top of each other with an arrow, and you can see all the different things that I've done. So starting from my new document to my first paintbrush stroke, so I can go one by one, I can select them all, I can go back. So it's a good place to go back. You can do Control Z, which just goes back, but that will only go so far. It might only go back one or two steps. Your history panel really allows you a lot of different options when it comes to your going back and forth or going back in time, if, if you will. 
Um, another thing you can use, which I haven't used too often, um, but it's kind of cool, is it has a snapshot option as well. So I can actually create a snapshot and now this has become a new history thing. So I can either start off with my blank document, I can come down here to different ones, or I can jump right to a snapshot. So I can do a bunch of different things and have a snapshot, or you know, you can just do your history. The only thing is with your history, eventually it will clear out and you will only be able to go back so far. The snapshots do help with going back further and you can name them um, anything you would like. So if I wanted to rename this snapshot one, I could just double click right on the text and now I will call it test one or whatever you wanted to call it. So that's your history panel. And I guess one more thing while we have a little bit more time. Your layers are very, very important in Photoshop. So it looks like these two little pieces of paper on top of each other. So you see right here, I have a background layer and pretty much any time you make a new document, you will automatically start with a background layer. So for example, I'm just gonna quickly clear this off. Now, if this was a picture or anything else, that would be the same thing. So it would be, the picture would be your background. It wouldn't be blank. Now, if you wanted to do something different, if you wanted to do something different to your image, which of course you do because you're in Photoshop, you always want to create a new layer. And let me kind of give you an example of this. So I'm going to file and place an image on here. I'll just choose something random. Okay, so that came out very, very small, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm holding shift down as I grab from the corners, and that way it keeps it the correct aspect ratio. If not, I could end up with a squished image or whatever, which we don't want that. So I'm gonna hit enter to keep my image the way that it is and kind of keeps it from being so blurry, kind of solidifies it. All right, so <clears throat> if I want to right on top of this, I want to create a new layer and now I'm going to right on top of it, just right high again. Okay, so now because it's on a new layer, I can hide this layer using the eyeball by clicking on it. I can hide the cover image. I can hide both layers and now I just have my background. So it's important to always, always, always have layers for everything. And here's an example why. So if I do not have a new layer to write my high, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it right on this layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, it won't even let me do it because it's a smart object, hold on. So I'm gonna rasterize my layer, don't worry about that, we'll talk about that later. I'm going to write high on my DD1 cover image. Well, now if I change my mind, I don't like that anymore. Well, I can't hide it because it's right there. And unfortunately, you can't erase it either. So I'm gonna do Control V. What you might be able to do, let's see, is go to your history panel. And now I can go back. But remember, like I said, your history panel cannot always save you. So it's always best to have the new layers because if you close the file, you save it, close it, and then reopen it another day, you may not be able to undo that second high, the one that I wrote on top of the image cover. So this pretty much sums up our quick little tutorial on Photoshop. I hope it helped to give you a little bit of a foundation, and we're going to keep building on these things. Don't get overwhelmed. I just wanted to give you an overview slash broad strokes of some different things that you can use. Again, we're gonna go through all these things at different times in more detail.